Having vacationed in southern Maine as a child, I was anxious to return for a chance at striper fish with a couple of captains that call Casco Bay their home. Fast tide is, is definitely key yeah, in yeah, this yeah. bay. Oh, yeah. yeah, we like incoming tides, going tides. There's, there's an absolute ton of bait. We go out here, we've got a friend who's got a uh, lobster smack, which is always holding bait on it. The thing that would blow me away when Casco Bay, if I was fishing up here, would be like, where to go? I mean, it must, you must come out and just be like one of a thousand places to, to fish. Looking at it, there's just so many points and, and uh, bays and inlets. Hey, welcome to On The Water TV. We're going to be heading out today with Captain Chris, Captain Josh. We're in Casco Bay, guys, this is four and a minute. Right now we're at the uh, mouth of the Harrisica River. Brewer's uh, boat yard is, is uh, in the town of Freeport, and uh, we call it South Freeport. Uh, the Harrisica River dumps out into the northwest part of Casco Bay. It's a really tidal area, drops down to a bone dry most of the river, but there's a deep channel right up the middle. We're going to uh, start a section on the west side of the river, which is uh, we call Grandma's because uh, Josh's grandma used to live there. And uh, he's going to take care of us today. That's you. right. That's right. Go over to Grandma's. grandma's. Head over to Grandma's house. Actually, pop right around the corner here. I love this boat. We're going to get out on this sometime too. Absolutely. It looks good. It, it's been the bait boat for this trip. <laughs> Has it been? <laughs> it's the nicest bait boat I've seen. <laughs> Tide rips through here. Oh, I imagine. Two huh? to three knots of tide coming in and out of here. Uh, high tide at nine, so we will be fishing the incomer for a while. We, we've got uh, live max. We've got lots of different top water stuff. We'll we'll throw the kitchen sink at them. I think the thing that we always focus on here is just having everything because it's it, it, you got to be versatile. You got to be flexible. We got a little structure on the outside, but. The tide will fill up in here, bait gets pushed up along the bank. So we're going to go up here, we'll start to drift, the wind should push us right down the bank. We're just casting right in, it looks like we're freshwater bass fishing on structure. It, 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 that's right, we're going to fish the edge. Yeah, so we're working structure right along the shoreline. These fish will cruise right along, hoping to come into a school of bait and just pin them right up into one of these little coves or inlets here. While I'm reeling, I twitch it. I don't let it sit still at all. Reel and twitch, reel and twitch. Bass just came yeah. up and swirled on yep, it. See it? I saw it. And camera grandson. Yeah. <laughs> so far, a beautiful morning, great light. Yeah, just over our deck, right shoulder, Brewer's Yacht Yard. So we're not, we're not that far off. We're already into fish, which is a great sign. Josh, to my left is hooked up twice now. Of course, he's got the very good water. We'll let him get back in the water and grow up. There he goes. All right, let's make it happen. Sorry, guy. Just gonna put it through the top of his mouth. That's all it is. This Mac is heading out of town here. He's nervous. I just put a nice fresh livey on, put him out there, and he just got chased pretty hard. Striper just blew up on him, didn't eat him. If he did, he spit him out. Oh, he's still on it. There we go. Chris, you tight? I'm t nice butt. Circle hook on here, so I'm gonna let him go a little bit. There we go. I, I switched out for a circle. Watch your boat. Watch coming your, your way, coming your way. Got a 20 pound liter fluorocarbon to a four aught circle hook with a live mac. That's why I let him eat it as long as I did. That bait's got to, that hook's got to get, get all the way down. I'm going to come up to the bow, walk around you. I can get him over here. I can turn him. There you go, nice fish, huh? There you go. Perfect hooks. Right in the corner. He's been eating good. Oh, he's in fella. Come here. All right, you're there, you're there, you're there. All right. Beautiful, huh, Cap? Nice job. Guys, we got beautiful light right now. We're, uh, would this be considered Casco Bay? This is Casco Bay. So we're in the, we, we haven't left that far from Brewers, right out in front. 
Cam Chris picked up one. Josh let us jump ahead of him. He's already got a couple. Chris, beautiful fish. What do you say? We're gonna fish. I think we stay here for a little while longer. Let's work this spot. If we get fish like this, we stay here. Guys, you're watching On The Water TV. When you come back, we're hoping to make that fifth again. We'll hook up a few more. Let's get this guy back in the water. What a gorgeous fish. So we're sitting on a uh, lobster cooperative bait shack. They keep their bait here and they uh, also transfer lobsters before they bring them into Portland here. The mackerel hold right under the, under the raft and we took a uh, pogey and scraped a bunch of the scales off and chopped them up and threw them over, did a little chum with them and now we're just trying to get the max to come back. They kind of do loops around the whole smack and when they come by we hope to stick a few. Oh, get them nice up here. Get another <laughs> half dozen to a dozen. All right, with the mackerel jigging, we got a sabiki rig, which usually has anywhere from four to six hooks on it. Very, very small with a little shiner indicator on it. So what we're doing is just dropping it down, got about four or five ounce weight below it, just dropping it down. I'm working the very bottom. These guys are up in the middle somewhere, so we'll find them coming through. Just a twitch, twitch, twitch. That's all we're doing. Into the well with this bad boy. We're gonna turn him into striper. Yeah, let's, uh, we got some baits, let's hit it. We'll go All back right, out, we'll go soak a few more liveys. We've got Little John's Island on the, on, on the port side and, and Cousins on the right. This is, uh, the water does flow through here between the two islands, but it, it, it does ground out. We've got a couple of little narrow fingers of deep water that come up in here. As you can see off the bow, they're, they're, these are flats. A lot of the light tackle guys will pull these flats and fish these flats. We're just gonna anchor up right in the corner of, uh, right up on the tip of this little finger of deep water that comes up. We got nine feet. I would say this is probably pretty good. Get a little slick going. This outgoing tide will take this out to the deeper water and out to the deeper part of the channel. Hopefully it'll entice somebody to come up and take a look at the good baits. Just threw a nice fresh mackerel on. We got a little balloon just to keep them out of the weeds. We got eelgrass down below, so we just want to make sure we keep them out of there. We actually moved off somewhere. We could probably fish them without it, but I got a circle hook, put it through the roof of his mouth right there. Find the hard plate, bury it in there, and let's get him back in the water while he's swimming. The less you handle these fish, the mackerel, the better off they are, the longer they'll swim. You hang on to them and put a you know, big clutch on them, trying to hook that thing in, they'll die off a little quicker. This guy's swimming good, get him away from the boat, and try to keep these balloons separate, cover more water that way, and uh, just letting these, these do their thing, actually go out there. As soon as any big bass come in the area that can have the ability to engulf these fish, that balloon will start dancing all over the place. It tells us to get ready. I'm tight. As soon as we got an eight feet, huh? Here we go. We needed that. A little deep of water, they were out of here. We, we probably started about six feet of water, but we lost the tide. Or we're losing the tide, I should say. And the captain just made a nice call to move out to deep of water. We got out in deeper water, it wasn't a minute. We can keep them away from that Yeah, I want to keep them away from that anchor line. Well, we've had a great day out here. We picked up some fish early, not far from Brewer's Yard Yard where we started. Look at him, he's green, huh? Yeah. Coming right at you. There you go, Cal. Mm. Nice. Big healthy fish, huh? Yeah. Beautiful. Right in the corner, circle hooks. Thank you very much, beautiful fish. We just made the move out to eight feet. We weren't there a minute and all of a sudden, bam, it was on. His, his balloon actually started running quick. I think he pulled off of that, came over to mine. And uh, that's excellent. 
That's beautiful. There's a few more down there like that, I can tell you right now. All right, we're gonna let this guy go. He's happy and healthy. Muscles up, look at that. He's real healthy, real green. Nice. Good job, Chris. Nice, we needed that one. We needed it. We got it. Casco Bay. Casco Bay fishing. Let's get another one. That's exactly, I agree with you. Oh, did he just get it? I might have lost it. Nope, nope, he's still there. It's a nervous bait out there. He's getting worked around. That was a, that was, yeah, that was a nice that was fish. A great eat. That was awesome. That was I'm gonna slide eat. under you, Chris. That's awesome. Oh. Oh. oh, he's not that small. No, he's not. So we got 12 pound test here down to a yeah, 20 pound liter. Not the heaviest material. Fishing in about eight, eight feet of water with a live mac under a balloon. And he crushed it. I'll just take my time. That was a big mackerel he had on there. That was the plan, wasn't it? That was, was what like, it was. Let's put it... The big boys need a ply. I got a live mac on the line running up the leader. <laughs> See the mac still That's alive. awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> he just saw the boat. He got the mackerel out in front of him. Okay. Yeah. I don't know how much it's going to swing in. There we go. Okay. This one's in. There we go. Max score. There we go. All right. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Casco Bay at its best, huh? Nice striped bass. Came up. You had a big mackerel out there, Chris. That thing came up and just crushed it. Size matters. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Casco Bay Striper. The green up in there is awesome. Nice healthy fish. He's been eating well. Come on, we're going to get him back in. Chris, who are we going to end that with? Uh, my friend Hugh Bowen from Freeport's got a brand new, big, beautiful uh, West Mac and called the Long Haul. He's right over there in uh, Broad Sound, about two miles from here. We'll go up to a boat to boat transfer. You guys can go haul some bugs. When we return, Chris drops me off on a 42 West Mac where I get a first-hand look into Maine lobstering at its best. Well, we've already had a pretty great day out here. We picked up a couple of top water fish, a couple on the uh, live mackerels. If you haven't been up here, it's beautiful. You're gonna find, uh, along with uh, the home of LL Bean, you're gonna find some incredible outlet stores. And uh, if you haven't been up here, you have to make a trip. Downtown Portland and then north to Freeport is just beautiful. The whole main coast for that matter, but I think what you're gonna see in Freeport is real special. And we pushed off the brewers this morning. The, the uh, brewers, what would that be called? South Freeport? This is, yeah, they call it Brewers South Freeport Marine. Yeah, this one, they've got a real diverse group of uh, customers and slip customers here. They, they do pretty much all kinds of work. I mean, I've done I've done electrical work, I've done carpentry work with these guys. I've been here for since 2003, and this is one of the brewers that's actually run by one of the family members, which is nice. We got, some, yeah, it's great we got one of the owners on the property, and they do a great job. What's nice about it, too, is that I think there's 22 brewer's yards up and down the coast, all the way down to New York. Um, so it's great that if you're, you, know, you can plan your trip, stay with groups that are all gonna be the same that way. Yeah, they, and for slip customers, they give a uh, they give a nice fuel discount. So if you're cruising and you're down in Massachusetts, you pull, oh, into, nice. you pull into another brewer's, they give you a break on fuel. Yeah, they seem to be good people, real good people. And, and uh, we started working with them probably three or four years back. One thing I noticed about all the brewers, and I'm sure this is the same way, they have a real working yard. They, they, uh, they cater to the sport fishermen, the sailboat. And uh, we saw the lobster boats, and I guess we're going to be heading out with one of them later on today, huh? Yeah, my friend Hughes on the uh, long haul today. He's got a beautiful big new West Mac, and he's uh, hauling traps right out in Broad Sound, so we can cruise you out there, do boat to boat transfer, and you guys can go get some bugs. So we're going to see how the uh, pros do it. Join us. We're going to head out on a long haul. Looking for a real good time on that. Uh, that's going to be something.
All right, you can watch how the process starts here. You guys, with two going on board the long haul, you can't come to the main without actually doing a little uh, lobster fishing. I'm just staying out of the way and watch these guys. The way they do this dance, they've done it many, many times. So what he did, he just pulled up his colors. The first mark is coming in. I'm gonna go ahead and set it up on the wheel. As the line comes in, they're gonna toss it down below to get that out of the way. Thank you. Andy Spaulding is working with him right now. You watch how quick these guys work together. This is your first trap coming in. They'll each measure them. They have a, a gauge that'll determine whether it's legal or not. Anything below that gauge on the dip has to go back in. Close one. Anything above it, they get to keep. There's a nice one. Done this a few times, huh? They'll pull it up. Andy will start the whole baiting process while also checking on the size of the lobsters that they have here. a series of eight traps in here. If they go offshore, they're gonna run 16 traps. But right now, we're at about 30 to 40 feet. They're inside Casco Bay. They don't have to go with a long one. So they're gonna run with eight traps. And it's a whole dance that they have set up here. When the first one comes in, it goes in. They bait, set it up, and then once they're done, the whole trap thing will fall right off the bat, one trap at a time, perfectly spaced out. But uh, Hugh's been a real gentleman to let us come out. You can't come up to Maine and not see the lobster boats work up here. This is the capital of the world when it comes to lobster. And um, we've been fortunate enough to see a few sets today. Hopefully we're lucky enough to make buy a few of them up at the end of the day to bring back to Falmouth. You, how long have you been lobstering? Oh, feels like forever. Yeah. <laughs> I remember being in third grade and doing a presentation. Did you really class. love yeah. it? That's yeah. unbelievable. I guess I never remember not wanting yeah. to be one. <laughs> Take, takes a while to get Yeah, I know. It sure does. Long oh, time. Brand new boat. What size is this here? 42 West, man. These boats are just incredible platforms. You've got seven traps lined up in the back, and I imagine you can put 12 on there without them uh, being in each other's way. I didn't realize there were seven or eight in a set like that. With the last of the pots we said, it was time to rejoin Captain Chris Lorenz as he promised to bring me to one of his favorite spots in all of Casco Bay. Yeah, he's just, oh, look at that. Look it up, right there. Oh, yeah, here we go. That's a nice there fish. There you go. And hey, well, welcome back. So we just came into another cove here. This is gonna set us up just along. It looks like uh, got some grass in here, huh? This is real tidal in here. We got the breeze coming this way. We're gonna drift this whole shoreline. There's a nice rock outcropping right over here. We picked up a couple of fish out of here the other day. You can see it. I'm just gonna stay. Oh yeah, right here. So what I'll do is this. We'll throw them out yep. this side because we're gonna drift down. Yep. That's perfect. Just like we did at Grandma's we're house. Flip these guys off. I don't think they'll find a home because we'll probably drift fast enough that we don't have to worry. Guy's taking line. So we got a uh, four-aught Gamagatsu circle hook to a 20-pound fluoro up to 20-pound braid.
which is good. I like to get them away from the boat. Sometimes these live mackerels, they want to just hang right around the boat. They feel a little safer there. It's almost like being in a school with this big thing above them. But this guy's off on his own now, so this is usually when they get eaten. I got them off away from the boat. I'm gonna flip the bale, I'm gonna loosen my drag, and I'm gonna let them run. It's not a bait runner, but I'm gonna kinda of treat it as one with the drag being so loose. When a fish comes up and hits that, give it a little take off. Oh, oh, oh! Yeah, the bait's just... Yeah, he's just pulling, oh, look at that! Is that awesome? Let him really eat it. I'm in free spool right now, so... Hooked up, right there, oh yeah, there we go. Lines <laughs> start pulsating, really pulsating. How's that tag set? Yeah, it's good, it's good. He just made a run right at me. Oh, he's right up on the surface, right there. All right, he's made a couple of really nice runs. Chris just brought us down on this piece of structure. We made a real nice trip, came down, hooked up again. I think he's ready to come up. Oh, he's still down a little bit. Look at him down there. Beautiful. I'm gonna walk him right over your shoulder. Yep. Coming to the tip. Yep, coming right into you. Nice. Another nice fish, look at that. This is about what we've been getting. Real, real healthy fish that are coming in there. Um, nice accounting of itself on the, on the uh, fight. Let's pop that hook. Let's see if we can get him up there and make one more drift. I love this area that we're in. Captain, thank you. Wanna do the release? Yep. Yeah, he's look he's looking good to me. Let's let her go. Look at that tail swimming away, huh? All right. We've had a beautiful day up here in Maine on Casco. So many beaches in Casco Bay with kids playing up on the beach. We got a, a nice drift going right now. It's gotta be 70 plus degrees. Can't ask for anything else. Well, Chris just moved this in real close to this to shore here. They got all sorts of boulders in here, and I mean big boulders. I mean, it's only about four or five feet of water right here. Got everything going on that they like. Coming up on the rocks. The honey hole. Oh, right foil, right here. Foil, right here. Yeah. Well, I'm not moving this guy at all. Has he gotten any of the rocks? You think? No, no, he's off the rocks. Here, right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna back down on him a little. He just got so much line on me right now. Yeah, well, let's get some back. What do you say? Yeah, that sounds good. Well, I got a fish hooked up, but it just seems like something seems funny about the way it's coming in. It's just something's on it. I just, every time I pull it, I get that pop, 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 like it's coming off a rock or coming off weed or something. We're gonna back down, see if we can almost get vertical on him. He's not moving, that's what's weird too, you know? He just popped off. Uh oh, there it is, there's my problem right there. Weed? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna get, try to get that weed off. Yeah, that'll be great. I'll walk this in back here. I'm gonna go pop it. You can go midships on us. Yeah, I'm gonna walk right back. See if we get that off. I'm gonna just keep walking. Here he comes. I'm gonna bring that weed right to you if I can. Oh, he's a nice fish. Nice. That's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a beautiful fish, huh? Guys, if you get up to Casco Bay, make sure you visit some of the many coves that make up Casco Bay. We got islands below. I think there's 222. Over that, yeah. Over that. Hey guys, if you'd like to learn more about today's show, log on to onthewater.com. From Chris Lorenzo, Chris Megan, you're watching On The Water TV. Cap, I can't thank you enough. What a great day this awesome. has been. Awesome, awesome. Let's get him back in. June in Casco Bay. <laughs> yeah.